Hi everyone, what's up? Josh here from Alternative Brewing. In front of me today, I have hand grinders going up against electric grinders. And I hope to answer two questions here on whether you can save money buying a hand grinder over that of an electric grinder to make really good espresso. Actually, that kind of includes my next question, which was, can a hand grinder make good espresso as good as an electric grinder can? And my choices of grinders, either manual or electric, are numerous and I could have literally gone with any pairing. So I went with similarly top of the range, well known, both conical grinders and both known to do espresso. And I have little doubt here that for filter coffee brewing, you're more likely going to get a better cup of coffee using a Commandante grinder over that of the niche. And let's say I bring in then a flat burr electric grinder and swap it out for the niche then I think any similarity then honestly begins to widen even further. And I don't think there is a hand grinder that quite stands up to say something like a DF64 in a comparative test for filter brewing. But if you think that there is, then certainly let me know in the comments section down below. And of course, before we get started, liking this video lets me know that you wanna see more videos like this and subscribing means you're not gonna miss out on those videos when we release them. So with that, Let's jump in, talk more about these grinders, and then we'll get dialing in our coffee. Now, I'm really interested in the geometry and the size of burrs, and then the RPMs that they spin, and how this affects the flavor of coffee. And on the one hand, you have niche that use 63 mil mats of burrs, and these spin fast, or reasonably fast, at 350 RPMs. Whereas the Commandante, this uses 39 mil burrs, that at my best judgment, and this is not over the top but steady grinding, I'm going at about 170 RPMs on the Commandante for a full dose. So looking at those figures, you could say the Commandante is just a little bit over 50% of the speed and size of the niche. So speed is one we're naturally gonna to concede to the niche. Of course, it's gonna grind faster than a Commandante will. And workflow too, sort of. And I've said this in previous videos, that the workflow on the niche is just superior and so smooth. So from a usability standpoint, of course you're gonna be putting in less effort, the niche will win, it's stepless, not stepped, so on and so forth. We don't need to talk about retention at all or anything like that. But then I'm kind of thinking at this stage, if niche is just gonna win out on all of that, why are we even doing this video? But having a hand grinder to do espresso also comes with its own benefits. And the Commandante is a very durable, high quality grinder that's compact. And that has to be the biggest plus of any hand grinder is you can throw this in your bag and take it anywhere. It doesn't need electricity. You can almost fit it in your pocket. And of course it comes in at a third of the price of the Niche Zero. And there are even cheaper grinders. Like this Paul X, for example. This uses ceramic burrs, and it's at 1 20th of the price of the niche, and it'll still grind fine enough for espresso, I think. So we're just gonna include this in the video. Also, Akinu Simplicity. It's a little bit more expensive than these two grinders, but it does espresso really well. And the JX Pro from Easy Presso, because it is really hard to say whether I'll come back and do another comparison just like this. So hopefully with this spread of hand grinders, whatever the outcome should be, should be pretty close to any other grinder that you might have in mind. Yeah, so now let's just uh, get these grinders all dialed in on a bag of coffee and begin to taste. So to keep things level and just challenge myself on dialing in five grinders on camera, I've got this bag of Toby's Estate Espresso Rico Blend that uh, I'm gonna open up and then just begin to dial in all the grinders first before we then taste the coffee. Let's do it. Ooh, smells good. That'll keep the beans fresh. We've got tasting notes of stone fruits, honey, and milk chocolate. I'm liking the sound of that already. So we're gonna dial in the niche first. I got uh, a 20 gram basket. And I got the niche set on 20 for my first go. I love naked baskets. 
So we're going for 20 grams in, 40 grams out in 27 to 30 seconds. 40 grams out, 21 seconds. Gonna need to grind this a little finer. I'm just gonna go slightly back more than one notch on the niche and that should bring us into line, hopefully. Maybe one and a half notches. Let's try that. Awesome, so after the second espresso, that was 40 grams in 26 seconds. So I've gone from 20 back two notches from my original brewing of 21 seconds. Now I'm just gonna adjust it maybe half a notch back now, and that's gonna get me in that window of 27 to 30 seconds. Sweet. So that's the niche locked in. Now let's do the Comandante. All right, so I've started the Comandante on, let me just go back to the zero point here. One, two, three, four, five, six, five. Five clicks from where it stops and stays still. So, which I always find is like a lot finer than I normally would have on the uh, MK3 model. This is the MK4. The MK3s, they used to be like uh, around seven to 12 clicks, but this is like five to six, which is great because it's like, it's sooner. What was that? One, two, three, four, five. Let's give that a crack. Now this is the pace I would probably normally grind with the Comandante. This is what feels comfortable. And this is at around 170 RPMs. And mind you, this is at the like, the finest of settings. So it's, it's really quite easy. Choke. It's coming. Yeah, too fine. Too fine for this one. Let's go. Yeah, it's only just starting to drop at 20 seconds. Ouch. And here I was saying that it was too fine to begin with. Should have listened to my instincts. Six, should probably double that <laughs> to 12. There we go. Sometimes I find with the Comandantes, there's just, there's just one little bean that's kind of sticking out there, waiting to be ground up. But it's much better on these models, newer models. Ah, that's much faster. Too fast. Yep, way too fast. Wow. 12 is not the setting either. 12 is not the setting. Let's go back to the zero point. So now we've got the Comandante set on seven. Whoa, looking better. Probably just a little bit too fast still. Yeah, a little too fast. Twenty. Wonder if one more click is gonna be that difference between super fast and super slow. That's always the problem with hand grinders. Or stepped ones especially. It's just that just that stepping point, like finding that right adjustment. So we'll go back to zero. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's give this a crack, hey? Six clicks. Whoa, that's pretty. Thought it was gonna choke there for a second, but it didn't. But it is running a little slow. I'm sure it'll catch up soon. There you go, it's caught up. Okay. So we're at the point now where the Commandante five clicks, uh, the espresso shot is choking. Six clicks gets us 31 seconds uh, for the right output and seven clicks gets us too fast. So we're just gonna roll with six clicks and possibly lighten the tamp up or just drop that dose like 0.2 of a gram and it should flow through that just that little bit faster. Let's get onto the Polex. All right, Polex. Now I've got this on, I think I was using the Polex suggested uh, clicks of six clicks for an espresso. Let's check that out for a second. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, okay, on. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. All right, let's see how this goes. Now the Polex grinder, this uses 38 mil burrs as well, but they're ceramic burrs. Much, much cheaper. It's a lighter grinder. And it makes fantastic pour over coffee. I haven't been a big believer in ceramic burrs grinding for espresso for a while now, but I'm prepared to be corrected right now. All right, Polex grinder for espresso, six clicks. Whoa, that looked pretty. No channeling. Anything, it's, it's a little slow. No, that's catching up now. Slow. No, bang on, 30. Ah, I had the right grind setting to start with. That's pretty amazing. 40 grams, 30 seconds, six clicks. Wow. And that's sometimes what happens with hand grinders. You just get lucky. That's the Polex kind of set. I don't feel like I need to adjust the grind anymore on this. I'm gonna put this away for now. And we'll go over to the Kinu. All right, the Kinu. Just had to fill up the water tank. Now I've got the Kinu set at 1.8.0, which is uh, the recommended starting point for espresso, at least. Let's do it. Oh, a little bit of popcorning. Surprised that was able to pop all the way out of there. Oh no, oh, that's probably a channel that was. Yep, that's plenty of channeling. Too nasty. Nasty. <laughs> yeah. Let's go a little bit finer and do that one again. Oh, when espresso goes wrong, it goes really wrong. Has nothing to do so much with the grinder's quality as it is I just have to be dialing it in and getting it on those settings. I hadn't started this video with the grinder's pre-tested. I've literally walked into this just blindly almost hoping to dial these grinders in quite quickly but uh, that's why for this particular coffee you just have to dial it in and find the right dial setting and then for another coffee it's gonna change. The fun of dialing in. All right let's go again. Now the Kinu, these use 48 mil conical steel burrs so it's much bigger grinder than 
the Paul X and the Commandante are. So it grinds a little bit faster, I would say, is its benefit. It also has a very precise grinding uh, adjustment mechanism. Very precise. It's coming through, it's choking. It's choking. Oh, hasn't even dripped yet. 1.8.0, no. 1.0.0, no. 1.4.0. Let's do that. Oh, it's a bit fast. Ouch. Too fast again, come on. That almost got me. Wow. Wow, 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 that came out so fast. Eight was ridiculously fast. One was too slow, four was too fast. So there's quite a big jump then, I guess, between one and four even. Let's take it back to two then. All right, so with the Kinu, I went from 1.8.0 back to 1.0.0 to 1.4.0 and now I'm at 1.2.0. So we're gonna see, see where we're at with this one. Nice. Just come out nice and slowly, gushing now. A little bit faster than I want it to be. Yeah, a little bit faster than I want it to be. That's all right. At least it's gonna be somewhere in the ballpark now, at least. Yeah, 23 seconds. Woo. All right, one more espresso. That looks pretty. And it's on a good pace too. Woo, we might've found it. Yeah, it's on a great pace. Lock it in, that was perfect. 1.1.5. And that's just how it works for the Kinu with this coffee, with this machine, with this setup. We found it. Oh, I so wanna taste this. But we've got one more grinder to go. All right, so the Easy Presso JX Pro. Now this is similar to the Kinu where it has 48 mil burrs and also a grind setting adjustment, which is three numbers for its reference. Uh, we're going to be starting on 1.5.0. Let's just see how that goes. <laughs> Obviously the starting points haven't really helped me so much other than the Paulex, crazy enough. This is probably the hardest of all the hand grinders, even the Paulex. This, was, this feels harder than the Paulex. But I am aware that it grinds super fast. Yeah, like, that's even faster than the Kinu. Yeah, choked. Choked massively. All right, so that didn't work. What should we go? Coarser to now, it, my mind tells me just go to two, but I might just like 2.0.0, but because we're on 1.5.0 at the moment, I might just go to 1.8.0 and just see how we go with that first. 1.8.0. Ooh, I came through. And fast. Luckily I didn't go 2.0.0. Yeah, wow, that's really fast. You might, I must just be on that cusp. That was 15 seconds. You know, you just like, you might just be on that cusp at 1.5.0 and you just need to tip it that little bit coarser and it just runs perfectly. So I went between 1.5 to 1.8. So to split the difference would be 1.6 and a half. 
I feel like that might get us somewhere. Let's see if this, let's see how this goes. Fast, a little bit. Oh, it's like right there. 26 seconds, 40 grams perfect. Let's just do one notch. Roll it from there. So 1.6, 0.4, 0.3, 0.3, 0.4, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3
I can almost feel it on the spoon itself. This is much thinner. And I was gonna say the, uh, I haven't met a great sponsor of ceramic burrs for espresso, but let's see, let's see how this goes. All right. It's smooth. Yeah, there's not that, there's a brightness in the JX Pro that was that was delightful, but the the Kinu kind of turned that into a milk chocolate sweetness, whereas this was kind of like that that uh, stone fruit uh, acidity that was still enjoyable. This didn't have as bright an acidity, but it was nice, nice and sweet. I guess you could say this is kind of has a little bit of both. Not a lot of body, and it's very clean, like it's, whew, it's gone again. It's, th it's there at the start, like everything's there at the start and then it's gone again. Yeah, I don't feel like this, this holds very well, but, but like it certainly still makes a good espresso. There you go, Paul X makes good espresso. All right, Commandante. Now, I, if I was a Commandante owner and making espresso, I think I would absolutely buy the Red Clicks upgrade uh, and that would allow me to just find that grind setting that, that, you know, is not there all the time as it is. Oh, deluxe. Yeah, it's just so rich and velvety. The highlights here are like the, there's like honey. Not a super bright acidity, but a, like there's a rich, a rich chocolate to it. It's lingering a lot more than certainly the Paul X is. Uh, it's standing up there along the Kinu. It's probably a little bit more nuanced than the JX Pro. Lines the mouth a little bit more, like it's a bit heavier. All right, so we've got brightness, we've got sweetness, we've got cleanness, cleanliness. Yeah, I wouldn't have, you know, it has a little bit of everything, but it's like super clean. Well, it's a fast finish as well. Then we've got velvety richness. What does the, what does the niche have to offer us? Let's check it out. Excuse the cup, I ran out of glasses. Yeah, it's pretty boring. No, I'm kidding. How would I explain this? There's just more flavor to it. There's just more flavor. It's like, it's delicious by the way. The niche, that, that shot is delicious. And it's equal to all of these and some. Like it has, it just, you know, like you would all give these a couple of tasting notes and, it, and it, I think it would be the right thing to do with the, with, the, with the coffee that it, with the way it extracts the coffee. Whereas with the niche, with an electric grinder, let's say, it has that ability to just kind of open up more, it seems, of the flavors. It's, it's, it's not as bright. I wouldn't say it's as sweet. It's definitely not clean. Like it's, it's just a, it's like everything lingers, all the good flavors linger. Um, and it's not as rich or velvety as the Commandante either, but it has all the flavor.
yeah, there's just a depth to it, I guess. Yeah, that's interesting. I think like, that's really interesting. I mean, you gotta be careful with these stepped grinders though that obviously it's not gonna be, it, it worked this time, but with another coffee, it might not work. Um, yeah, that's really nice. Wow. And I've just drunk one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, um, two espressos, two and a half, three espressos. I'm bouncing off the walls or we'll be, it'll help me clean all this up. That's the end of this video. Um, I honestly think that all of these grinders in their own right, now I could taste different coffees with them and give my different opinions on how they compare with the niche and how they, you know, are better for one certain coffee or another, but uh, like, you can complicate coffee so much. You can complicate coffee so much. But honestly, the questions that I was hoping to answer with which can these grinders, hand grinders make espresso? And can they make espresso as good as the niche? Yes, in a sense, and no, in a sense. Like I, like, I would, not one of these espressos would I turn down. They're all delicious, they're all great. In their own right too, obviously, each grinder kind of makes the coffee taste a little different, which is something that I love. Do I feel like I'm missing out if I don't go out now and buy a niche? Because I want my espresso to be as best as it possibly can be? No, like I would be, I would be equally happy with brewing the same espresso with any one of these hand grinders. So, so the workflow, the speed. Yeah, the niche does it, but but there is there, you know there are qualities with a hand grinder that do it too. So I think I think I've kind of answered the question there. If you want a if you want a hand grinder that can do espresso and pour overs, sorry, if you want a grinder that can do espresso and pour overs, I think a hand grinder is a great option. If they're, they're way more affordable and they're portable and compact, you can throw them in the drawer. If you want uh, an easy, simple solution to dialing in coffee every morning, then something like an electric grinder, you, you can't beat that workflow compared to what you've already seen, the difficulties I've had with a hand grinder. So the coffee's starting to kick in, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I can walk away from this and think, which of these espressos am I gonna finish? Maybe I should just combine them all and drink them all in like a shake. Anyway, thanks for watching the end of this video. If you like to leave your comments in the, down below in the comments section and uh, we'll get back to you.